All right, hi everyone. So I thought we'd start out today by um, talking about some general game design tips and looking at advice from professionals. So I uh, asked Twitter <laughs> a little while back, this is about a year ago now, um, for the class that I taught last year, I asked them, fellow game designers, what's one indispensable tip that you give my students who are designing and documenting their first game? Um, and I got so many responses from so many developers, both big and small. A lot of people that you might have heard of, some people that you won't have. Um, I've collated all the responses in a Google Doc, which I will just show you now. So this is what the doc looks like. Um, you can check this out at any time. It is open to you. Uh, it is under game design tips. So the second tab, there's a game industry roles tab as well. Um, but you want the game design tips tab, which is the one for this class. And you'll see all of the, all of the uh, advice that was collated here. So I um, color coded it by the kind of advice I had said, like how many people basically, how many responses we had that were ba that basically that advice. And you can um, read all the tweets that were sent by everybody who replied to me in this thread. It's a very fun time, but I'm just going to go over the biggest ones. So let's do that. And let's see what they said. All right, so communicate with your team. Um, reading some of the tweets. A design doc is just a promise to have a good discussion with the team and prototype the idea. It's rare to get things right on paper, even for experienced designers. And also, it's more important to be someone that people want to keep working with than to have good ideas. Um, so yeah, when you're working on your DDDs, especially if you're working with another person this semester, be sure to be a good communicator because the more that you are able to communicate with your team, um, the easier it's going to be to actually like get the work done. Get it playable fast. So get to a playable version ASAP. It could be cardboard, a simulation, a dirty prototype, etc. You're designing with your eyes closed until you're playing something. Also, stop, meaning stop planning and start doing. The plan is trash. Dev changes the plan. At square one, you know too little uh, to design well, naively ignorant of the challenges to come. So even though we're making a document in this class, and I am going to be asking you to plan things um, pretty well in advance of making them, I also like strongly encourage you to do some paper prototyping. We'll be doing an exercise um, where you get to sit down and like do some whiteboarding or writing on note cards or kind of figuring out the mechanics on paper first. And I highly recommend doing a little bit of that, even play testing it on paper if you can um, before committing your rules to your document. Design for players. So a game is a relationship between the design, design and the player. So think about where the player's attention is and how much of the game they understand right now and make sure your design is supporting their learning and mastery. Who, uh, what are you making this game for? Is it a tech or skill demo? Is it for sale? If so, if so who will buy it? Is what you're adding making it better at what you're trying to do? Is it worth the time and effort? You'll answer these questions wrong lots, but the practice of asking is good. The next piece of advice was test and iterate. Test early, earlier than that, even earlier, still not testing early enough. And play test with a lot of different people. Don't be afraid to restart from scratch and always think about accessibility. Uh, so by the time that you get to the sort of prototype phase of this, which will not be in this class, but um, if you do take this on uh, as your capstone, as soon as you have anything that's playable, you can have people looking at it. Use your pillars. So design or decide what your core pillar will be first and make sure when you get excited and want to add new features and systems that they actually support that pillar and that you always consider scope. Boil the game down to its most meaningful choices. So pillars are something that we discussed in the last lecture um, as, I mean, literally like the, the core idea that your game centers around or the core set of ideas that your game centers around. And so throughout you know, the whole process of making this document, I do want you to continually try to return to your pillars and make sure that every decision that you're making is tested against that core idea. And if it doesn't fit, then you can, you can leave it out um, or you can adapt the idea to fit better with the pillars that you've decided on. 
document your design clearly. <laughs> so this kind of goes, it's, it was funny. Sometimes you get, uh, you know, like sort of competing advice from people. So there were people who said, don't really bother documenting, just get in and prototype. Um, this is sort of the other side of that. If you remember the, the you know, a GDD is for memory and communication. This, this is sort of the memory part of it, perhaps. So add as much detail as possible to any design so you can uncover when uh, you're hand waving something big and complicated to make it sound small and manageable. This helps you scope better, which as other people have said, is probably the most important design skill. And it's better to be wrong than vague. Um, so when you're creating your mechanics section specifically, you want to be as uh, precise as possible and ideally as detailed as possible. So even if your design changes um, once you start prototyping, having the detail in your document will you allow you to build the prototype without having to answer a lot of questions on the fly. Um, really when you, like <laughs> vagueness is your enemy here, you, you don't want to get into a position where um, you don't actually understand the mechanic that you were trying to build because you didn't write it in enough detail. So try to make sure that your mechanics are as uh, precise and detailed as possible. Every game teaches you something. So it is a marathon. Each time you build a tiny new system, it will take you multiple attempts before you figure out how to do it well, like three to 10 projects. Celebrate having done a thing the first time. Celebrate having done a thing the fifth time. Each time, note what you've learned. And ask questions, watch tutorials, read reviews, play through videos of other games. Don't be afraid to change, take critique. If it's easy, you're not trying hard enough. Um, so both play games and make games is kind of the takeaway here. Live games, but also do other stuff. And the very most common advice that I received, which was 27 responses or one fifth of the response make something small. If you want to make it big, ambitious game, find one crucial feature in it and design a smaller game around that feature. Scope down, no more, even more, keep going. <laughs> Scope down, make it amazingly small and finish it. Make Snake, make Galaxian, make Concentration. You'll learn so much. I made 50 little games before getting a job doing it. If you can't scope your game down, make it in Pico 8. It'll constrain the heck out of it for you. So this was by far the most common advice was to make something small. And I do also advise you to keep your scope small. Um, for this document, you only need to really scope out what the prototypical version of this game will be, not the full game. So if you're planning on making something that's like full length, um, you really only have to plan enough for a vertical slice or a demo or um, or like the first couple of levels or sections. You don't have to do something really big right now. And ideally, it only has a few core mechanics, but that are polished really well. 